Hello, my name is Liv Flora Delanui. I'm a photographer who specializes in macro photography and artistic editing. This is the fourth part of a multi-part tutorial that teaches you how to create a dreamy minimalistic edit. In this tutorial, we will organize the layers we are working with. So this is going to continue to show you some of my workflow. I am going to briefly introduce you to the concept of non-destructive editing. I will then introduce you to smart filters and how they apply non-destructive editing ideas. And then I'm going to introduce you to the camera raw filter, which is an incredibly powerful filter in Photoshop that basically gives you access to Lightroom Classic within Photoshop itself. So the purpose of this tutorial is just to serve as a basic introduction to these concepts and tools. We will use camera raw filter extensively in the next tutorial in which we will do color toning. As a result, this tutorial will be very short. It's just to make sure that everyone is familiar with camera raw filter. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is just some maintenance. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a group from all the existing layers that we have right now. So we're going to select the topmost layer. We are going to hold down shift and select the bottom most layer. Then we're going to right click choose group from layers where it says name we will enter cleaned up background and then we will press ok now we're going to add a layer on top of the group so we're going to go to layer new layer where it says name we will enter merged result Press OK. Now we're going to go to image, select apply image. In the window that pops up, we want to ensure that everything remains as such. That is, we want layer to be merged, channel to be RGB. We do not want invert checked. We want blending to be multiply and we want opacity to be 100. Okay, now we're going to press OK. So what we just did is we created a layer with the merged result of all the layers that we just grouped together. So now what we're going to do is we're going to discuss non-destructive editing. So before we discuss non-destructive editing, we're going to discuss destructive editing. So what is destructive editing? According to Computer Hope, destructive editing is a computer graphics term that refers to editing that does permanent, irreversible change to an image. Therefore, non-destructive editing can be thought of as the opposite. That is, non-destructive editing is editing that does not do permanent, irreversible change to an image. Stated another way, it is editing that allows you to easily undo an action and return to the previous state of your image. So I'm going to reopen our project. One way that Photoshop has enabled non-destructive editing is with smart filters. Smart filters allow the user to apply a filter to a layer and then go back at a later time and adjust the value of the filter. This is very important with gigantic filters that make many changes to the image like camera raw filter, which we are going to rely on a lot in the next video. It basically ensures that we don't make any monumental edits we cannot undo. So let's go ahead and convert our merge layer to use smart filters. To do so, we are going to go to filter, convert for smart filters. In the window that pops up, we're just going to press OK. And now you can see this little icon right here that indicates that this layer has now been converted for smart filters. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply the camera raw filter. So we're going to go to filter, camera raw filter.
So this is the camera raw filter. The camera raw filter is one filter that relies heavily on the GPU. It relies heavily on the GPU to enhance the details viewable on the images you're working with and to make the user experience more responsive. Both of these features are further enhanced by the RTX accelerated NVIDIA GPU installed on this laptop. The camera raw filter is perhaps improperly named. It is not so much a filter like box blur. Instead, it gives the user access to all of Lightroom Classic in one window in Photoshop. Well, it does not give the user access to the catalog, but it does give the user access to the entire develop module found in Lightroom Classic. You have access to all of the sliders found in Lightroom Classic. So you have access to the basic sliders. So exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, etc. You have access to the curve panel and it functions exactly as it does in Lightroom Classic. So you can adjust the darks, shadows, lights, and highlights down here. And you can also adjust individual channels. So the red channel, green channel, and blue channel. You also have access to the detail panel. That is the sharpening and noise reduction and color noise reduction. This is actually really useful because what you can do now that you're in Photoshop is that you can apply noise reduction twice. And for a really noisy image, that might actually help you reduce the noise a lot more than what you could do with Lightroom Classic alone. You also have access to all of the color toning tools found in Lightroom Classic. So you have access to the HSL that is found right here where it says color mixer. So as you can see, this is just the HSL as you would find it in Lightroom Classic. This is the color grading tool found in Lightroom Classic. And right here, calibration gives you access to the color calibration tools that are found only in Lightroom Classic and also only in Camera Raw Filter found in Photoshop. So let me open up this panel for you. The other panels are exactly as they are in Lightroom Classic as well, but they are not as important to me. So we're not going to look at them. So the other thing that we have access to is the color profiles. So if we click here, we will see all of the color profiles that are found in Lightroom Classic. So the basic color profiles, the artistic color profiles, the black and white color profiles, the modern color profiles, and the vintage color profiles. We also have access to all of the presets found in Lightroom Classic. This is a really big surprise to a lot of people. So the presets are found here. And now, not only do we have access to the presets that come with Lightroom Classic, we have access to any presets that the user installs themselves or makes themselves. So here are some presets that I have made myself. And here are some presets that I've installed. And here are the presets that come with Lightroom itself. So this is actually really great. It means that we can do things like layer presets which is something that a lot of people like to do, but not possible with Lightroom Classic alone. We also have access to the selective editing tools found in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. To access these tools, we click right here. As you can see, the panel that opens up looks exactly like the panel in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. If I clicked this button right here, it would select the subject as it does in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you. Now, here's our mask. And here are the adjustments we can make to the mask. Or rather, here are the adjustments that we can make 
to the masked out area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some adjustments in camera raw filter. These adjustments are only for demonstrative purposes. I just want to show you how camera raw filter works with smart filters. So let's go ahead and make some basic adjustments. So let's increase the contrast all the way. So set contrast to positive 100. Let's decrease the vibrance a lot. Let's adjust the curve. So let's darken the darks. This is very moody. This is more my typical style. Let's darken the shadows as well. Let's also increase the lights. Maybe let's decrease the lights. So we have a very dark and moody image. And let's press OK. So now we have just applied the camera raw filter to the image. We have done a ton to the image because we basically just used Lightroom within Photoshop. However, this has less damaging results because we applied the camera raw filter as a smart filter. So what we can do now is we can click here and reopen the camera raw filter. So we are in camera raw filter again. Now we're just going to make some adjustments to the adjustments that we have already made. So this time we're just going to actually make our bright, our lights brighter. And we are going to adjust the color calibration. We are going to set the blue primary. We're going to set the hue all the way to negative 100 and we're going to press OK. So as you can see, the camera raw filter is a really powerful filter, especially when used in conjunction with smart filters. It should be used in conjunction with smart filters in order to reduce the likelihood of basically making a huge mistake that you can't undo. Okay, so we're going to undo this. We're going to delete the filters. And now we're back to the original result. So that's it for this video. I know it was mostly conceptual. We primarily covered camera raw filter, but that's because we will be using the camera raw filter a lot in upcoming videos. It is also just a hugely important filter because it basically gives you access to all of Lightroom Classic in Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to NVIDIA's channel for more videos like this.